Hello, everybody, and welcome again to the OpenShift Commons briefings. Today, um, we're having a, a reprise. Um, back in May of last year, I think it was, Alvin Creaky of Kinfolk was here demoing a very early um, version of their integration for traffic control um, in, with Weavescope um, from Weaveworks. And he's back again. They've made it an official plugin, and he's going to demo it and show some of the new stuff you can do with it. So um, there are a few folks from Weave also joining us. And the format for this today will be Alvin will give his talk and his demo. Um, you can ask questions in the chat, and we'll try and answer them. Um, and then any of the good questions we'll ask out loud so they get recorded, the answers. And then we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. So. Without any further ado, Alban, please take it away from Berlin. Thank you and welcome. Um, so I will talk about the traffic control in plugin and how it can be used to text, test application, web, web applications. Um, but I will start to uh, present myself. Uh, I am Alban and I contributed to Rocket. And at the moment, I'm working on uh, WeaveScope on eBPF. And a few years ago, I worked on traffic control already, but for different use case, it was for multimedia application in cars. And, um, so the demo I will do today is uh, we're using that traffic, traffic control ID, but for uh, a web application running in microservice. Um, I work at Kinfolk. It's a company that I co-founded uh, in Berlin. And we work on uh, foundational Linux technology. We like uh, low-level software. We like uh, Rocket, SystemD, Linux, uh, WeaveScope. Uh, that's some of the software we work on. And um, you can find more about Kinfolk on uh, GitHub, Twitter, etc. So uh, today, um, as you said, it's a second time I do this talk. But last time, uh, when I demoed uh, traffic control, it was uh, in a different stage, state. It was very much um, proof of concept, but now it's properly integrated into WeaveScope. Um, so I will uh, show WeaveScope uh, with some demo using uh, an application called the Sock Shop. It's a um, um, web application developed by uh, two companies, uh, Container Solutions and WeaveWorks, and uh, it's user microservice architecture. I will show how to install uh, that, how, install, how to install Scope on OpenShift, and what's the architecture. And then I will show the plugin, um, the traffic control plugin, how to use it, and what it serves for. And I will uh, show another plugin of um, with Scope. And at the end, I will show some uh, guides that uh, WeaveWorks has on their website um, using Catacoda. So we've works. Um, I will start with uh, showing directly. So let me uh, quit my slide and show you. I will show you my uh, setup. So I have my laptop with a virtual machine and running OpenShift. That's the OpenShift um, console where I have uh, the default um, the default namespace that I created in OpenShift and. Um, I have two new uh, namespace that I've created at the bottom, uh, SockShop, that's the demo application, and uh, WeaveScope, where I install um, Scope. Um, on... Now I'm showing you uh, Scope. So that's, um, that's a view of all the containers running on my cluster, and that's, um, here I am on the pod view. So the pod view, uh, it's a Kubernetes pods containing one or more uh, container image. And what's interesting here is I can see uh, the communication between the pod. For example, here I have the front end pod and it's communicating with the catalog. That means at the moment there is uh, one socket uh, communicating between them. Oh, I have some demo effect, but I will come back to that a bit after. And uh, that's uh, with scope. Sorry, that's with socks. Uh, that's a um, web shop where people can buy um, socks. And I have uh, a different page. I will quickly go through them. Um, the home page and the catalog page. And each of those use a different um, container. So um, 
when I'm clicking on Firefox here, I'm talking, uh, Firefox is talking to the front-end container, but um, behind the scene, the front-end container is talking to uh, different containers. So let's go back here. Uh, since I click it, I clicked a bit on the web page, the front-end established a communication with other containers. And I see, uh, I have a visual uh, way to see the architecture of my application. So it's, uh, I think, easier to read that way than to have uh, just a list of uh, containers like that. Another thing I like is we can have a more high-level view. So here it's a list of pod, but we can see a bit more high-level, see the Kubernetes deployment. Um, that's not a big difference here because I have only one uh, replica of uh, each pod. But on a larger cluster, that's um, more useful to have a bigger view, and then I can see the communication that happens at the moment. Um, so, but I have also have the low-level uh, view. See, here I have all the containers. As, as can be quite a lot of them. And I can have a view per process as well, which will take a bit of time on my laptop to load. Here it is. Um, so that's uh, with scope. Um, let me go back to the slides for now. So how I installed uh, scope on OpenShift. So the, lab, the first step I did was to create a um, project on OpenShift or Kubernetes namespace that I call with scope. I used the following command to create that with uh, the OC command line tool with OC new project with scope. And then I gave it some privilege because I want the container running uh, with scope requires a privilege to be able to list all the process on the node, to list all the process, the connections happening. And it cannot just live in its own container, but it needs to have access to everything to be able to inspect what's happening and report them. So I need to give the uh, privilege capability to um, the with scope um, project, and I do that with that OC command. And then I want uh, with scope to have um, access to the Kubernetes API so that it can inspect, it can ask a Kubernetes what are the list of pods, the list of service, and everything. So I do that uh, as well with uh, OADM command. And I, I give the right of uh, with wide access to the Kubernetes uh, API. Once I prepared this uh, Kubernetes namespace, uh, I installed uh, scope. So for that, I get the YAML file. Um, I will quickly show you how this looks like. So on the WeaveWorks web page uh, on scope, there is a um, different way of installing it. Um, but what we want here is the, to install it of Kubernetes. So we can get uh, this YAML file, which describes the different components used in uh, with scope. And with that, I can just uh, install it using, for example, the OC create uh, um, tool. So, um, Scope, as uh, I mentioned, that Scope has several components. There is one component called um, Scope App. That's what uh, Firefox, in my case, is talking to. So that's uh, provide the glo global view of all the containers to the user. But it gets this information from the Scope Agent. And Scope Agent is a demand set. That means uh, it's a demand running one time on every node. And that's what will uh, fetch the list of process, the list of um, connection, the list of parts, et cetera, on each node. And then the scope agent is also called uh, the probe, by the way. Um, it's uh, sending a report to the app. Uh, it's actually a JSON file that I send through HTTP. So regularly, the agent sends the information to the app. And that's how it works. Uh, now I will go uh, to the main topic of the talk, is uh, the traffic control plugin, and uh, demo it. So, um, 
let me go back to the pod view and I will show you um, that I added something in the cart here. And uh, if you see, if I refresh the page, um, it's not, well, it's a bit slow on my laptop, but it's not that bad and it seems to work fine. Um, but actually there is some uh, UI problem that are difficult to see for developers who are usually uh, good internet connection. Um, but when there is a connectivity, connectivity problem, it's more difficult to see uh, from a developer what's happening. Uh, so um, I will show you right now in the front end. Uh, I see it's connected to uh, the catalog. I wonder what happens if I add a lot of latency to the catalog container. So here I click on the catalog uh, pod. I see it as a list of containers. Um, actually, only one is interesting now. It has uh, one catalog container. And then um, the, um, the traffic control plugin that is installed on Scope. Uh, by the way, you can see at the bottom. I don't know if you can read. Uh, that's a lit list of um, plugins that are installed. Um, it added some controls on the UI to change the latency. So uh, if I click on this, uh, that's the demo effect. That's not supposed to show that. But it's supposed to um, add um, two second latency on every packet uh, going through that uh, catalog container. OK, I will try again. Um, let me try another time. OK, uh, I will check if it works now. Um, so uh, to check if it works, I will show you the debugging uh, console of Firefox on the network page. I will reload, and I will see how much time is spent on each request. So I see most of the requests happen uh, quickly, it's, uh, in any case, less than a few seconds. But here, as, um, as you can see, there is a couple of requests which take uh, more than eight seconds. And that's on the catalog um, uh, page. And the reason for that is that um, when I fetch the page, the home page here, uh, you need to uh, ask different containers to populate the UI. And some containers are fast because the, I didn't change the latency. But some containers, like the uh, catalog, uh, added uh, two-second latency, as you can see here from the plugin. Um, so that's why uh, when you delay every packet uh, by uh, two seconds, it makes it a lot slower. So the good, what you can do with that is when you refresh, you can see what are the. <coughs> sorry, you can see the. Um, uh, that's the shopping cart appear to be empty. And that's a bug in the UI. That's not supposed to be like that. It should at least show that uh, something is still loading. Um, so that's not a good uh, user feedback. And to, um, to debug this kind of issues on a website, it's useful to add some latency on different containers and to, uh, to see what's happening. So in this way, you can debug a website and uh, see what's happening. So I have the source of um, that page here, that uh, HTML page. And the, um, to get the list of um, elements in the cart, it's actually done uh, in a asynchronous JavaScript um, code. And that's why it was not showing up um, directly when the HTML page was loaded, but it appeared later. Um, so I can show it again. And then uh, I can, from the UI, remove the traffic control. Um, I have some demo effect, which make it not working sometime. And I will um, try to do it on another uh, container. For example, the user uh, container is responsible for getting the information about the user that you see at the top here. Uh, here, I'm logged as a user. So if I fetch the user container, 
in the pod when I make it uh, slower. And when I refresh this page, uh, at the top, you see there is no information here. Um, we can wonder whether it's a good uh, UI or if we can display a loading message or something like that. Um, okay, that's it for the demo. Let me go back to my, my slides. Um, to install uh, the plugin of Scope, of Scope, they are not part of the main Scope project. They are on a different repository. Here you can see the GitHub repository. It's on uh, weaveworks-plugins slash uh, scope traffic control. And here you can fetch the YAML file that you can use to um, install on Kubernetes. And then you can install uh, directly with uh, OC or kubectl command. And how it works? Um, the plugins are uh, demand set, although that means that uh, they run in one copy on each node. And then the agent on uh, each node will ask the, each plugin if they have additional uh, metrics to give or if they have additional information to give. In the case of um, the traffic control plugin, the plugin will tell the agent that uh, it wants to have more control on the UI. Uh, that is a button to uh, slow down the add more latency or reduce the latency or things like that. Um, so the way it works is uh, is a HTTP communication on a Unix socket, and the agent will ask um, um, regularly to the plugin uh, what it wants to uh, display and uh, what metric it has. Um, as I said, it talks on a Unix socket, so each uh, plugin should create a Unix socket in that directory. And then the scope agent will uh, look in that directory and uh, talk to uh, whoever is there. That means that directory is a um, shared bind mount between the um, uh, scope agent and the plugins. Um, there are two uh, protocols. Uh, the plugin protocol has two interfaces, one to report additional metrics and one to add more uh, UI buttons to have more control. Um, if you want to uh, develop a scope plugin, uh, that's the way you can do that. You can follow the documentation. I will show you how it looks like here. Um, on the WeWorks website, there is documentation how the how to how works the protocol uh, between the plugin and scope, and there is some uh, JSON extract to explain how it works, and there is also some uh, Go code uh, showing that. But there is also some uh, existing plugin. So if you go to the GitHub organization with work plugins, there is the traffic control plugin that I'm talking about the HTTP statistic plugin that I will mention after, and some um, other plugins. So you can look at them to, um, to look how it's done and implement your own plugins. Okay. Um, so now we'll talk how the traffic control plugin actually work. Um, I will explain uh, things about traffic control. So uh, traffic control, the first use case was not about testing like that, but it's usually uh, for, for example, for web servers to um, guarantee that uh, each client has a fair uh, share of the bandwidth or to reserve bandwidth to a specific application or for routers uh, to avoid buffer bots. And how it works uh, on Linux, Linux has uh, uh, what is called a queuing discipline. And it's a network scheduling algorithm, which will decide on the network interface, which packet to emit next and when to send it. And that's configurable on Linux. Uh, by default, uh, uh, network interface always has a queue disk. So it has a default one and you can change it to uh, different ones. Um, as an example, there is one called uh, stochastic fairness queuing. That's just an example. Uh, this one will uh, do a round robin on a different class of connection on some one packet at a time 
on each uh, different queue. Uh, okay, so I'll talk a bit about QDisk, but how does it work for testing? Um, there is a QDisk called Network Emulator or NetEM. Uh, uh, it exists since a long time ago in Linux, since uh, Linux 2.2. And that's a network scheduler that you can uh, install on a network interface. And then you can configure different properties like the uh, bandwidth, uh, the latency, or to say I want some packet loss or I want to corrupt packet. So there is a uh, lots of different parameters you can uh, play with. Uh, in this demo, I only play with uh, latency. Like I want to add uh, two second latency or a bit less to each packet. Um, and that's what I was using for. But I don't want to uh, change the latency of uh, everything on my laptop um, because I would uh, otherwise uh, put on the, the video call or everything. So um, I, I want to configure the network um, the network scheduler only on specific containers. Um, and each uh, container has their own network interface. So if you can configure the queuing discipline on a specific network interface, then that's okay. Only the thing in that container will be affected by uh, the change of configuration. So in this case, that's what happened. The traffic control plugin of Scope actually configure the network uh, interface of specific containers, but not everything. Um, that's... Um, that's it for the explanation about uh, traffic control. I want it if I have time, I think there is time to um, talk about a different plugin, uh, still a plugin in scope called uh, HTTP statistics. That would be great. Um, sorry, say again? That would be wonderful if you could do that as well. Okay. So let me go back to uh, COP. I will close this. Um, um, so I have a terminal here, and I have um, a shell script. Uh, if you say, see correctly, that's a loop. Uh, that's uh, connecting to uh, this URL, and uh, so repetitively connecting, uh, fetching a web page. So while I have that running in the background, I will. Uh, I go back to scope actually and I will inspect the uh, front end uh, container. So let's see front end container. I should have inside the list of process. So here I have a node process that is the web server actually and other process. If I click oops if I click on the node process Uh, the HTTP statistic plugin added additional information in that view. So this view with this graph is not in a scope uh, upstream with that plugin. It's, um, it's added by the um, statistic plugin. So here I see there is about three HTTP requests per second and uh, about the same of HTTP response. And I see that's HTTP 200 response. That means that uh, everything is okay. And actually, if I look, it correctly. So I'll stop that. And I have another test. Uh, that's a different uh, URL. As you can see, it's, um, uh, well, it's a URL which uh, doesn't refer to anything. It should return a 404 error. And when I run this loop, it downloads a file, but the server should uh, give a 404 error. So let's go from here. And after, um, uh, so that's not completely um, uh, instantaneous. It requires a few seconds, but hopefully after uh, a while, um, it should display the number of HTTP requests per second. And this time, the response is no longer 202, but it's uh, 404. Um, if you have two, um, uh, if you have two requests, uh, with all, you will see the different graphs uh, on the same uh, view here. So that's the HTTP statistics um, that are installed. I can show you the view 
Uh, here at the bottom, here you see the list of pods, but I can filter on uh, different uh, namespace. I can see other namespace, but maybe that's a lot because there are some uh, containers for some pods from OpenShift, some pod from uh, with, uh, with scope, some from uh, workshop. Uh, if I filter on uh, with scope, then I only have four containers. That is the agent, the application, and the two, um, the two plugins. Um, okay, so uh, the HTTP plugins, how does it work? Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so to install the HTTP uh, statistic plugin, it's pretty similar to the traffic control one. Uh, you go to the uh, web page to get the YAML file, the Kubernetes YAML file, and then install it. That will uh, just create a daemon set. Uh, so one pod on each node uh, that will uh, uh, give the information. So how does it actually work? How does it give uh, the statistics? That's a bit more complicated. It uses uh, eBPF programs. So uh, for that, I need to talk a bit about the kernel, what happens when um, when packets are being sent between process. So uh, there is a kernel function called uh, skb copy datagram writer, which is called every time we copy a buffer to uh, to a socket to a, spe to a specific process. And what the HTTP statistics uh, HTTP statistics plugin has is an um, eBPF program attached uh, uh, via Caprob to this uh, kernel uh, function. That means that every time this function in the kernel is executed, it will trigger the execution of the eBPF program. On the eBPF program, we will have a look at the buffer to see what's inside the packet. And if it looks like a HTTP request, uh, that means it has the keyword get or put or delete or something like that. Or if it looks like a HTTP uh, response, then it will update a variable uh, hash map actually, on the hash map, it's a hash table, uh, so that's a key value store between the key, that's the process, and the counters, which is uh, how many uh, HTTP requests there is, how many HTTP response. And the um, eBPF hash map is a variable which is shared between the kernel in the eBPF program and user space in the HTTP plugin. And regularly, the HTTP plugin will uh, uh, have a look at that hash map to know how many requests and response there are, and then it will be able to send that to um, the agent. And to install that uh, eBPF program, uh, the plugin does that. For that, it has a C function, which is compiled uh, on the fly by IOHAS or PCC to a BPF bytecode. And it's uploaded in the kernel and uh, it's installed on the, uh, with the KPROB on that function. Um, that's uh, all for the main main talk. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, some of the Katacoda uh, guides um, that uh, we work as on their website. So, uh, I need to and I'm, I'm also going to un, unmute Ilya, who has joined us, um, if, if he wants to add anything in. Um, in. Okay. He just needs to unmute himself. Ilya, do you want to say something, or should I continue? Continue. Yeah, Please. Karen. Karen Alden. Thanks. Uh, so on the WeaveWorks website, there are uh, some guides, and I will uh, show you how to, uh, it's useful to give um, software like a WeaveScope a try without having to installing or having to install a um, Kubernetes cluster or OpenShift cluster. So if you don't have a VM or if you don't have a cluster and you just want to give it a quick try, you can go to that web page, and I will show you how it looks like, like uh, trying the first one. And it's a guide with explanation how to uh, set up um, with scope in with cloud. And if I cl click on the links, um, 
I have to connect it to the uh, with Claude, but I prepared that before the talk, so uh, I can switch them. So here it's already prepared. Ah, no, it's actually it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so because it's live. <laughs> yeah, it's live, and uh, I guess after one hour it disconnect if I don't use it. Or I don't know exactly. Okay, so um, I will uh, stop my screen sharing uh, just a um, minute, if I can do that. Uh, type my one over there. <laughs> So while he's doing that, if um, the other folks who are on the, on the call, if any of you have any questions, um, just raise your hand in the chat and I'll, I'll unmute you and you can ask them. I know quite a, few, a couple of you I recognize as having large production deployments of OpenShift and I'm curious to hear how you manage monitoring and testing traffic, doing this sort of traffic control work currently and if any of you are already using LeafScope. There you go. Um, I can continue if not. Yes, please. Um, so I click on link um, and now it seems to work. I can, uh, after just a couple of links, I can, um, I have a Kubernetes cluster. I can type some kubectl commands and um, I can deploy thing by just clicking. It deploys the, the SOC shop demo and it's already running. And I can have a look at this page to see it's um, already running. It's faster than my laptop. And I can install a scope by clicking. Uh, I can type command here I want. And it's running. And now I should be able to um, to see that. Uh, in with cloud. So that's the very similar view to what I showed you before. Uh, but this one is not running on my laptop, it's running on with cloud. And I can see the uh, um, list of all my containers um, running uh, through that uh, Katakoda code. So um, I will not show further on that. Um, Okay. Ilya, is there anything that you would like to add to the um, the conversation here, from your perspective, on what's coming with Weave Scope? Any future features that we should watch out for? Oops, Ilya, we're not hearing you. I can try and Sorry, I, I happen to turn on the media and not the audio. Uh, <laughs> so what I was trying to say, we have recently released LeapScope 1.0, and um, uh, the the features in 1.0 include like external service uh, recognition, such as like if, you, if your app is talking to something like S3 or DynamoDB in in Amazon Web Services, you you you'd be able to to see those quite clearly in LeapScope. Um, other things we um, we've been working on are to do with vCloud, and uh, we have additional services in vCloud, which include vFlux, which is a continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes, and um, it should be possible to make it work with OpenShift. We'd be looking to 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 hear about your use cases for continuous delivery, and uh, if if something like vFlux could help you, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. And uh, uh, additionally, we we also have um, Eve Cortex, which is um, uh, a uh, Prometheus as a service, which is part of the cloud. Mm. And uh, I, I'd love to talk to people about those too. Right, well, uh, well, we, we're looking to integrate all of the three products together in the very near future, and you you, you start seeing features which uh, which cross the um, troubleshooting, uh, distributed systems debugging that Scope does, and uh, time series that, that Prometheus does, as well as continuous delivery type stuff. Perfect. Well, um, we'll definitely get you on to, 
to do a talk on and a demo of, of Flux and some of the other parts and pieces. Um, I'm going to leave it open a little bit longer here to see if any of the folks here. I, I'm very curious if, if anyone um, who's on listening in right now or listening later, if you're already using Weave Scope, if you've tested um, the traffic control plugin um, on your production environments already. So I'd, I'd love to hear from you either um, via email or um, the Commons mailing list. Um, and that would be great to get your feedback on the plugin and any insights you have to share with Kinfolk and Weave on, on that effort. So um, please do, if you're using in production or thinking about it or have a POC, um, the, the Weave Cloud um, Katakona stuff looks great as a way of testing it. So I'm, I'm really pleased to see that. Um, and hopefully we can all take advantage of that. So thank you very much. Um, we will be um, very close to Albin soon. Um, March 28th will be the OpenShift Commons gathering will be happening in um, Berlin. Um, and we'll be able to we'll have Alex Richardson is going to be speaking there. Um, so if you're interested in, in coming and meeting some of the Weave folks and some of the Kin folks, folks, um, we will make sure that they're there um, um, and available. And that's March 28th. And to find out more information about that, that's OpenShift Commons. Oh, no, it's commons.openshift.org/gathering, um, and you can find all the details and register for that um, if you'd like. It's the day before KubeCon, so if you're coming to KubeCon, come come join us at the gathering and and we'll um, hopefully connect you with all the kinfolk and we folks that you need. So um, with that, is there anything Albin or um, Ilya you'd like to add on top of that? Oh, and I'll be at FOSDAM too. So um, good. We'll see everybody in, in the chaos that is our, that wonderful event in Brussels. It's one of my favorite ones. And there are two rooms at FOSDAM this year um, that are dedicated to Kubernetes. Um, so there'll be lots of talks um, there, if you're coming, and that's in two weeks' time, is it the the fourth and fifth, I believe, of February? And that's in I will give a talk about uh, traffic control as well as for them, but that's in a testing dev room. Okay. That, that will be a very short uh, 10 minute talk. Um, uh, so I will be both at FOSDEM and uh, KubeCon. Yeah. The wonderful thing about FOSDEM is if you're giving a 10-minute talk, it'll take me 40 minutes to figure out what room it's in and where it is. But um, I, will, I will see if I can get myself there. All right. Yeah. Thank, thanks again, Alvin and Ilya, for joining us. And if any of you have questions, please do um, reach out either directly to the Kinfolk Weave folks or um, reach out to me and I'll, I'll connect you with them. All right. Thanks again, um, Ilya, and take care and have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Because yeah. That's where you're at. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.